For the United States, there are three areas of the world that are considered geopolitically more important than others. Europe, Northeast Asia, and the Persian Gulf. Europe and Asia because that's where the other two great powers are, Russia and China. And also because they are the major industrial centers of the world. The Persian Gulf is also important because that's where the oil is, which is necessary for the economy. If you look at the area where the United States is located, you will notice that it's in a very advantageous location. It's surrounded by two oceans and two weaker countries. On top of that, it is the strongest country in the Western Hemisphere, and it also has tons of nuclear weapons. So the United States doesn't have to worry much about being attacked by another country on its own continent, because it would be like a suicide mission for any country that tries it. The main concern for the United States is to keep on being the strongest country and maintaining its dominant position in the Western Hemisphere. And there's a special strategy for this. It is known as offshore balancing. This strategy focuses on checking the rise of the other major powers on those three key regions that are considered geopolitically important. The goal is to prevent any country from dominating the region and becoming a regional hegemon, a peer competitor to the United States. The way this strategy tries to achieve this is by encouraging and passing the responsibility of balancing against those potential hegemons to the regional countries first, because those countries have the greatest interest in preventing another country from dominating them or dominating their own region. So for offshore balancing, the first line of defense are the local regional powers. The US will provide assistance to them and will only get involved more if the regional powers are unable to prevent the rise of a regional hegemon and the balance of power breaks down. But what exactly does balancing mean? The way that countries balance against others is by looking for ways to avoid being dominated by a stronger country. They look for ways to make it hard for another country to use its military advantage, to deter it from attacking, and to reduce its possibilities of winning a war. They can do this by strengthening their own military and economic resources. They can also strengthen alliances, they can create new alliances with other countries, and they can also try to weaken the competing country. Anything that tries to equalize the balance of power. So these actions of countries balancing against other countries is influenced by the conditions of the international system. The more one country grows in power, the more it forces other countries to balance against it. This is because of many reasons related to the way the international system is structured. There is no world government above countries. So each country can only certainly rely on itself for its own security and survival. And the key to survival and security is power. Power in relation to the power of other countries. Countries can also never be certain of the intentions of other countries. Intentions are unreliable because they can change at any given moment. Even if a country has good intentions now, it's impossible to know the intentions of a country in the future. And if you allow the gap in the balance of power to grow and to keep on growing, because you believe that country has good intentions now, your country will be at a disadvantage if that more powerful country suddenly changes its intentions in the future, when the power gap is bigger. So in this case of countries balancing against the stronger power, the main driver of countries' actions are the conditions at the international system and the balance of power. So the leaders of those countries are going to be influenced by those factors. In the Persian Gulf, the goal is to prevent the rise of a country that could interfere with the flow of oil from that region and would be able to damage the world economy and the US economic prosperity. In Europe and Northeast Asia, the aim is to maintain a balance of power where the other great powers, China and Russia, remain too worried about their neighbors that they will be prevented from dominating those regions and roaming into the Western Hemisphere. In this case, with an offshore balancing strategy, the United States gets a type of double-layered security. The first one is that it remains the strongest country in its own region, in the Western Hemisphere, where no other country would risk attacking it. The second one is that if any country in those key regions of the world grows, 
to the point where it can dominate that region and become a peer competitor to the United States, the local powers will balance against that country first, and the US only gets involved when it's necessary to shift the balance of power back to the regional powers and prevent the potential hegemon from dominating that region and becoming a peer competitor to the United States. So I'll leave you with two questions. If we look at the areas of the world where there are the other two great powers, Europe and Asia, do you see any instances of balancing behavior by smaller powers against the other great powers, Russia and China? And do you see any instances of offshore balancing behavior by the United States, where it creates alliances and it seeks to pass the responsibility to balance against the other great powers first to the local powers in order to prevent those great powers from becoming regional hegemons in any of those three key regions. So you can write your thoughts in the comment section and feel free to subscribe because this is a very small channel so a few extra subscribers will help the channel grow a little bit more. So that's it for this one and thanks for watching.